Joining me today is uh, Ryan Aiken. So he's uh, a, a newer era veteran and also a reservist. So that will change some of the dialogue that we're having today. But Ryan, thanks for being here and, and I appreciate you coming in for the interview. Great, thanks for having me. Sure. So tell me a little bit about your service. Sure, yeah. Um, so I joined, I joined the Army Reserve in 2000. Um, I did my basic training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, um, as well as my uh, ad advanced specialty training. So I was there for a total of, of five to six months uh, during that time. Uh, my, my reserve unit was based in New Haven, Connecticut, and it was a petroleum supply unit. Mm -hmm. uh, with the, um, and I was in uh, a 63 Sierra, which was a heavy wheel vehicle mechanic. So I was in the ma maintenance platoon supporting the, the petroleum supply company. Okay. Um, so I did my, my two weeks, uh, one week in a month, two weeks a year. Uh, at that reserve unit in New Haven, Connecticut, uh, until we were uh, mobilized in 2003. So I believe it was the beginning of uh, February 2003. Uh, and, and then we went to, we got shipped up to Fort Drum, New York, in upstate New York. Lovely place. Very lovely place. Um, so we, we trained in the snow for the desert, which is very interesting. Um, <laughs> So we spent a, f a couple months up there just mm -hmm. preparing ourselves for deployment uh, overseas. Uh, we, uh, boots on ground, I'd say April 2003. Okay. And we were, um, our, our base out there was just outside of Nazaria, um, Iraq. Um, but before we, ma we made it up there, we, we all, um, we landed in Kuwait and waited for all our equipment to come in um, and then and then shot up to, to Iraq <clears throat> for to spend the rest of our deployment up there so we, we were there a, a total of 15 months okay yeah army definitely had longer deployments yeah it, it was so it was it was interesting too because you know um, I think before before all that the the average deployment for an army reservist was maybe six to eight months um, but what we found out when we got there, the, the need was just so great sure. that yeah, we, we probably got extended uh, two or three times okay. uh, while we were in country. Um, so, so in total, like I said, it was, it was about 15 months. Okay. So we ended up, um, back, we were all back home by August 2004. Okay. So before we jump into some other things, what made you want to join the military? That's a good question. So. Um, as a kid, I was just always drawn to um, the military, uh, what I saw on TV, shows, movies, mm -hmm. what, what have you. Um, so I was always interested in, in, in the idea of, of joining the military, serving my country, um, until I actually got to, of age to actually explore that um, further. Um, I, uh, I had a buddy who I went to high school with who had joined the Army uh, to become an MP, so military police. So I had reached out to him uh, after I graduated high school, um, probably, probably actually, actually, actually after my first year of college. I had reached out to him. Uh, my interest in joining grew uh, at, that, at that point in time. So I had actually had um, a few conversations with him and, and had him uh, come with me actually to the recruitment center to talk with some of the recruiters and, and just, you know, just to have, kind of have a, so ba a battle the, buddy. The real information. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, so, yeah, but, you know, just going back to why, um, it's, it's just something I always had, had wanted to do, uh, just okay. serve my country, so. Um, so any, I, any family members that served in the military? Uh, aside from my grandfather, who was in the Navy uh, during World War II, um, nobody else in my family has served. Okay. Um, so in this generation, I, I, was, I was the only one. Um, so no, yeah, no, no, nobody else there. Um, and it was, uh, it, was uh, it was tough for my parents um, to, to accept, one, me joining the Army, um, and then later on accept the reality of, of deployment. Deployment, okay. Right? Um, so what were those conversations like? Uh, ch challenging. Um, 
I mean, I think the the initial um, when I when I was of age and, and told them that I wanted to join the army, the military. Um, I don't I don't remember in too much detail. I just know I just remember my mother being very upset. My father a little confused, but accepting. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I, I guess I, at that time, being young, didn't really know how best to communicate what I wanted, why I wanted to do it. Um, but the, ar the Army helped with that. So they would send over a recruiter and who was very more uh, eloquent and well-spoken <laughs> than, than I was, uh, could communicate it better than I could. Um, and he did, a, he did a great job Good. convincing my parents to uh, accept <laughs> joining the military so um yeah and then, and then uh the deployment i guess it really it wasn't really a conversation it kind of is what it is what it is right, right? Yeah. Um, there really was no um choice in the yeah. matter um and it's what we all signed up for sure it's what we signed up for and, and that's that's um could be the inevit inevitable reality of of that decision so mm -hmm. Um, I was I was accepting of it, um, but you know, my parents um, they they were uh, understandably um, concerned. upset and concerned. Yeah. And, sure. Um, but uh, yeah, and um, you know, the good thing it was you know we were able to communicate throughout the entire deployment. Um, the military made it very um, made communication back home easy easy mm -hmm. for us while we we're out there. So I think that settled some of the anxiety. Um, Sure. And concern. So yeah. you weren't married at the time. I wasn't. Okay. So that was one of the things, um, you know, that I've been talking to the older vets, um, you know, from World War II on up. And we, we talked about your ability to communicate. So especially while you were serving. Yeah. So back World War II days, it was strictly mail. No phone calls ever, that kind of thing. And it's gotten better. Mm -hmm. Um, I noticed it myself as well that um, over time technology catches up and it's much easier. Uh, phone calls are easier, FaceTime, mm -hmm. you name it. So, so that does help. Um, after, after you came back, um, when did you get married? So I got married in uh, 2009. Okay. So, um, I got back from from overseas in 2004, so was, there was a good period of time yep. between when I, you know, when I came back and and, and got um, married. Um, so really, you know, that um, have, having you know a wife and family and kids really wasn't part of the equation at that time, which I think for me personally made it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Not having you know um, ha having had left a wife and, and kids back home, um, like some of my um, uh, fellow um, uh, fellow comrades uh, who who had had done that. So I think you know for them you know this the support and uh, brotherhood you know was was much more important for them. Sure, because uh, it, it was a much more challenging uh, dynamic for them. Okay. Uh, so what type of um, what type of things did you do on your deployment? What was your your main goal? I guess. Uh, so, so the, the our, our mission, um, our primary mission when, when we got there was to, again, a petroleum supply company. So our, our main mission was to supply fuel to all the convoys uh, going north and south from Baghdad. So basically we set up fuel points on the main supply route uh, to, to Baghdad and, and then from Baghdad. Okay. Um, so we, we fueled uh not not only uh u.s convoys but foreign convoys as well um so ba basically anybody moving up and down the supply route uh, that needed fuel um, our mission in the maintenance platoon was just to make sure everything was running uh, so that we could complete our mission okay um, so we did that uh, for the majority of our deployment uh, until i'd say 10 months into the deployment, we were replaced, no, I'd say, tw I'm sorry, 12 months into the deployment, we were re uh, replaced uh, by an Air Force, um, an Air Force unit that basically um, performed the same function okay. as we did. Um, so at that point, we were then uh, reassigned, uh, our mission changed and reassigned to uh, bases down in Kuwait. 
um, where our, our mission then was to provide force protection for, for those bases down there. Mm -hmm. So a little, little different, little change in, sure. in, um, in job and, and expertise. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, so I mean, you know, luckily um, it wasn't, uh, being in Kuwait wasn't as, you know, um, I guess hazardous at the time as being in Iraq. Sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we um, there, was, there were two, two bases down in Kuwait where we provided the force protection um, basically, you know, uh, gate security, uh, roving guard, stuff like that. Okay. So how did you get involved with a uh, maintenance MOS? Another great question. Um, so I, uh, it's a, it's a great question. I, um, I wanted, I wanted to learn something different, something new that I hadn't had previously had experience with. Um, it, my my degree is is in business, so very unrelated to any trade like um, like that. Um, so I basically uh, looked at the uh, the various reserve units locally. Um, this was down in Connecticut at the time, and um, just had a list of of the various MOSs or job specialties that that were available. Mm -hmm. And and from from that list, I just picked one that I, I thought would be beneficial. Um, you know, life experience beneficial down the road, um, um, and picked mechanic. And I, I, you know, um, I wish I wish there was more more to it than that. That's but okay. That's and and how did you like the the training, job function, everything? The the, the training was great. Um, and being so new to to the mechanic um, space, uh, a lot a lot of it was a bit challenging. Um, to um, consume, I, I guess, initially. Mm -hmm. uh, where I learned the most was actually being on assignment at, at the reserve unit in, in New Haven, Connecticut, um, where a lot of my um, fellow uh, comrades were, were actually mechanics okay. on the outside yep. in mm -hmm. the civ civilian life. Sure. So that, that's really where I learned the, the most was, was from them um, yeah. on the job, right? So the reason I asked that is because typically with the reserves, you would see just that case yeah. where, you know, you bring your specialty or your current job to the military rather than going to the military yeah. and receiving your training and so forth. But that's that's a, a neat uh, story. Yeah, so I mean, you're you're absolutely right. Yeah, the um the, the majority of folks in in the maintenance platoon had that experience outside. Mm -hmm. I, I was, I guess, the oddball, for lack of a better term. Um, but you know, it was it was great for me because um, there's just so much knowledge that I can consume during that period of time. Mm -hmm. So, have you done anything in that field outside of the military? I have not. Okay, I have not. No. Um, so I no, know now I, you're working <clears throat> in uh, is it finance? Uh, so I'm in insurance now. So completely different. Um, insurance doesn't. Fully align with my degree, but it's it's within that that business and finance space. Um, so completely unrelated to make, being a mechanic or maintenance or anything like that. Okay. Um, so I really didn't. Um, and and quite honestly, uh, at the time, the military vehicles, the Humvees, five tons, deuce and halves that we were working on consistently, um, were, were relatively straightforward in terms of the mechanics of it mm -hmm. versus vehicles today, which, you know, sure, yeah. it is a giant computer, which um, I couldn't even, couldn't even imagine working on today, but um, put a Humvee in front of me. And, and you're good. And I, 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 I can do it, <laughs> yeah. Um, so how long did you serve in the military? So, so in total, uh, it was from 2000 to 2008. So, okay. um, so actually my, my military, career was a little split up in terms of where I served. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is um, in the reserves, you sign up, it, it's an eight year commitment in total, um, but you can sign up for, um, uh, I guess, you know, it could be a four by four, which means four years active drilling, one week in a month, two weeks a year, four years inactive, which you're not doing that, but you can be called up at any point in time. 
Uh, I ended up initially starting off um, with a three by five. So it was three years active, five years inactive. Uh, got deployed, mobilized at the end of the three. So um, that, that got extended out a, a little bit beyond that. So once I got back, I was in that inactive period. Mm -hmm. So what I, what I decided to do at that point, and I had some, um, some buddies back in Connecticut. Um, I'd, I'd moved within Connecticut, so gotten further away from my drilling unit. Um, but I had some, some buddies in uh, the Air Force, the Air National Guard up by Bradley um, Airport. Yep. Um, so I ended up tra actually transferring branches to finish out my inactive period, I guess somewhat active, but drilling with the, the Air Force okay. to finish that out mm -hmm. as a mechanic. Um, and actually, um, actually learning a little bit more, more um, skills working on pickup trucks and stuff like that. So a little, a little less geared towards the, the military style vehicles and more towards civilian style vehicles. Um, uh, still vehicles are more advanced today, um, but I did, I did get a little bit more uh, experience, sure. a little broader experience within you know, doing mechanics. Mm -hmm. So what would your advice be to someone that's looking at the military as a possibility? Uh, I'd say it's, it's a, it's a it, I'd say the military is a great, um, it's, a, it's a great place to um, build um, expertise, discipline. Um, let me think, it's a good question. The discipline has been a common theme. Yeah. You know, and, and obviously it's a military and, you know, yeah. I mean, rules and regulations, but yeah, the discipline was a high priority item for, for the other guys. Yeah, I say, I say that's true with me, me too. I say that, the, you know, the discipline that, that you, um, you gain from, from joining the military, um, not, not only just um, will benefit you as an individual, um, but also will help you, I think, down the road as well. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be the case um, when I was out of the military, interviewing for jobs in, in, on the civilian side, um, especially within the, in the, the business and finance space. Uh, military experience goes a long way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of companies, um, civilian private sector companies, really uh, see a lot of value in military experience and the discipline and structure that that, that military experience um, usually provides and, and, and uh, instills in, in you know, people. Sure. Um, what would you say your most challenging aspect of your service has been? The most, the, well, the mo the most challenging aspect of, of my service um, was, was really the deployment. Um, just being uprooted from my, um, and, and I'll be more specific. Uh, so I, I got, I, I was mobilized uh, two weeks in to my last semester of my senior year in college. Um, so I was, I was almost done, almost done. Uh, so uh, I had to essentially stop, you know, um, everything I was doing at, at that time, pick up, get all my finances in order, um, provide, you know, have my father be power of attorney to make sure that you know, can handle anything um, while I was gone, um, you know, put, put college on hold mm -hmm. uh, and then deploy for that period of time, then come back and then reacclimate and attempt to finish that last semester of college. Um, so I think that that period of time from from the moment um, I was deployed to the, uh, the, the moment I, f I actually graduated college was was probably the most challenging mm -hmm. time during my my service. And I think that's probably the most challenging thing for uh, reservists because you you have to put your life on hold yeah. and usually all of a sudden. So, I mean, you can think about it, but when it happens, there's a lot of moving parts that you have to take care of, um, personally, uh, with family, friends, jobs, apartments, homes, yep. all those different things. So that adds another dimension to military service that active duty typically don't have to deal with. 
um, you know, they have base housing, things like that, you know, so they don't have to necessarily worry about a lot of family issues, but um, as a reservist, um, it's a game changer. Mm -hmm. So the commitment, I think, is a little bit greater on the reserve side, just because you have to juggle so many things. You know, you're, you're juggling school, yep. uh, drills, your ATs, all, all those different things that come into play, yep. and you're, you're doing it day in and day out. So, um, so that, that's a very difficult thing for some people to manage. Um, so what would you, uh, what would you say you've benefited most from the military from? Going back to that, that discipline and that structure, I think, um, I really take pride in, in, in being disciplined in what I do. Um, and then beyond that, I'd say integrity. So integrity, you know, being one of the Army values, our Army Corps values, mm -hmm. um, I, I like to do um, everything, you know, with integrity, uh, legally, morally, um, and I kind of take pride in that. Um, I also don't like to be late to anything, which uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, especially, uh, and, and I say that, too, because I, I now the kids are back in school full time and, and trying to get them, get them out the door in the morning so we could walk to school uh, over at Dallin. Um, it drives my wife a little nuts because I'm, I'm, I'm a little, <laughs> you know, a little, <laughs> a little drill sergeant. If, you, if you're on I time, guess. you're late. Yes. Right? So, yes. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're moving along pretty, pretty uh, swiftly in the, in the morning. Um, so don't like to be late. Okay. <laughs> So, so with your children, yes. What would you, if they came home one day and said, "Hey, Dad, I want to join the military," what would you say? I'd say that's, that's great. I mean, it's, certainly as a parent now, um, I, I would start having the same emotions that that my parents likely had at that time. Mm -hmm. But but being um, having experienced that life. Um, and and under, understanding, you know, the realities that, that come with that commitment and that sacrifice, um, uh, it, it would be difficult to maybe initially accept, but I, I would definitely welcome that idea and, and that desire to join the military because I, I think the military has a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mostly, yeah, mostly good. Yeah, especially yeah. nowadays um, yeah. where you can learn that trade. Yep. and carry it over into the civilian world, so. Absolutely. Um, so post-deployment, because that, that's a whole different animal reserve side compared to active duty. Yep. So active duty, whether it's you know coming off of sea duty, uh, coming back from combat, it, things are pretty much in place. But as a reservist coming back, what are some of the challenges you faced? Really reacclimating re to the civilian reality, um, and I think I think, and what I mean by that is, I think you know during deployment, being active um, overseas, the mission is clear. Um, you know where you have to be. You know um, when you have to be there. Uh, there's a lot more structure. Um, and aside from, from the unknown in terms of um, the volatility of, of deployment, mm -hmm. in terms of safety and, and, and stuff like that, um, you know, it's, I felt it a little bit more manageable at that time. We're coming back, there's a lot more, um, and it takes a while to, to kind of, like I said, reacclimate, get used to uh, the, the stresses that civilian life um, bring. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt, you know, um, I just felt like there, there was a lot more going on here that you had to wrap your head around. Uh, we'll start to, you know, uh, again, wrap your head around. Sure. Um, and manage. Um, like I said, it was getting back to school. It was getting my finances in order, uh, finding an apartment to, to rent while I finished college, um, or find, just finding a place to, to live in general. Mm -hmm. um, 
start planning for a job after that senior year in college. Um, all that had to happen shortly after sure. I returned. Um, um, within six, six to eight months, I'd say. So, um, and it, you know, interviewing for that job, you know, finding something, then interviewing for it, all, all within a relatively short period of time, uh, was a lot to. To it was a lot. It was a lot to handle at the time. Um, so we kind of had a. Um, so it was a challenge. So. So do you think you had adequate support services when you came home? Yeah, I say fortunate enough for me, my family was a great support system. So I had their support. I had support of uh, not just family, but friends. Um, I said the military was very supportive too. I, I personally, you know, didn't didn't lean on them as much as maybe some of my, my comrades did mm -hmm. uh, after after deployment. Um, but, I, you know, I, I do know, you know, there, there was ample support available, um, you know, for us if, if needed. Okay. So, hmm. so if you could, um, you know, if you could summarize your service, um, what would be, I don't know, three words that you would come up with to, to summarize your service. Worth it. Okay. Is that one word or two? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you one. <laughs> two more. Uh, worth it. Um, an experience. Okay. If that works. Life changing. Okay. I like that. With, one. A, with a hyphen. Okay. Let's make it one word. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So I really like that one. Um, so how would you say your life has changed as a result of your military service? So I, I just think I, I came out of that military service a better, stronger, uh, like I said before, more, more disciplined, integrity-driven person than I was before I, before I joined the military as a young 20-year-old 20, 20 um, with... Um, Discipline that that could have used a bit of work prior to so um, But I, I, I just think it, it, it made me an all-around just better person, okay um, And now a better husband a better father um, a better Citizen I guess very good. So now Thanks to and I, I told my Vietnam vets the same things. Thanks to the Vietnam vets, they, you know, because they received nothing when they came home. Right. That generation prompted the changes we see today. So, so we recognize that you can recognize a difference between the war and supporting the troops. So, um, so we've grown that way, which is really nice. Um, and I'm glad we are able to do that. Um, how do you perceive that recognition now? Or what are your thoughts on that? You know, if you go in and, you know, somebody says, oh, you know, you're a veteran, well, thank you for your service. Yeah, and I, and I, yeah, and I, I agree about the, the Vietnam era. I mean, that, that, was, that was unfortunate. Um, and, and I think, you know, there's, um, obviously it's, it's, you know, much more accepted today uh, and the support I think is, is much greater than it was was then um, I think I think the support today is is phenomenal uh, I think it's um, you know when, when somebody find you know um, realizes that I'm, I'm a veteran I think the the initial reaction is is very positive it's very um, you know um, they're very appreciative of, of my service uh, willing to help out in any way in any way they can um, I just think it's uh, as a veteran um, it's a much more accepting environment today um, anywhere I've gone um, the, the supports there uh, the recognitions there mm -hmm. um, so I think yeah I think it's um, yeah it, it's I'm appreciative of, of the acceptance sure um, no I, I think it's uh I think it's a, a very nice thing that you were able to come in and share your story. Um, and it is different being reservist than active duty. 
And, and there is a very big difference. Mm -hmm. I can say that personally myself. Um, and the amount of commitment, determination, all those adjectives that go along with that, uh, to be able to perform your civilian functions like you should, mm -hmm. as well as maintain the military side of the house, it's, uh, it's to be committed. So. Yeah. So I thank you for your service. Well, I thank you for your service as well. <laughs> thank you. Um, any final thoughts? None. I just I appreciate appreciate your time. Okay. Um, I'm just uh, yeah, and I just um, yeah. I just hope everybody you know takes a step back on Memorial Day and just remembers um, you know, those that have have made the ultimate sacrifice. Well, thanks for coming in. I appreciate you participating in this, and uh, maybe we'll do more in the future. Great. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you.